One of our core technologies is our collection of vision chips. A vision chip is essentially an image sensor chip with additional processing circuitry located on the same die. A generic image sensor, depicted on the left, contains a pixel array and an analog to digital converter. The pixel array is the circuitry placed at the focal plane of a camera lens and generates a variety of pixel signals based on the light image focused on it. A vision chip is depicted on the right. In addition to the pixel array, a vision chip contains additional circuitry that processes the raw pixel signals before these signals are digitized. In Sentai's chips, this is usually performed using analog circuitry. We also use highly parallel structures, with circuits replicated one per column or even one per pixel. You can think of this analog circuitry as a hardware accelerator for the selected arithmetic operations. We will now discuss Sentai's four current series of vision chips, the Faria series, the Firefly series, the TAM and TAML Pays series, and the experimental hex chip. And the Faria series of chips is available in two resolutions, 64x64 64 64 and 256x256. 256 256. Each Faria chip has a pixel array and a switch capacitor array. In between these two arrays is a row amplifier array, barely visible as a thin horizontal line. We now discuss how this chip is operated. Like that of any other image sensor, the purpose of the pixel array is to generate an array of pixel signals based upon the light image focused onto the chip. The pixel circuits have a logarithmic response to the image intensity, allowing a wide range of light levels to be simultaneously sensed. The capacitor array includes one capacitor for each pixel. One row at a time, we read out the pixel signals from the pixel array and store them on a switch capacitor array. The switch capacitor array now contains a snapshot of the visual field. We now look closer at the circuitry in the switch capacitor array. There is one capacitor for each pixel in the pixel array, which stores the corresponding pixel value. Each capacitor is connected to its four neighbors via four switches. Switching signals, denoted by H and V, short together adjacent columns and rows of capacitors. In a process called binning, we can operate the switches to form superpixels, or blocks of capacitors shorted together to have the same value. In this slide, we see 2x2 two two superpixels formed by closing every other H and V switching signal. Two 8-bit patterns, one each for the H and V switching signals, define the switch patterns and allow a variety of different superpixel shapes to be implemented. This 8-bit pattern for each of these directions is repeated across the entire array. Here we see that setting H and V to binary 11101110 implements 4 by 4 size superpixels. We can align the edges of these superpixels with the edge of the capacitor array, as shown here, or we can place these superpixel blocks on the capacitor array with an offset, as shown here. We can also construct superpixels of different shapes. For example, we can operate only the V switches to form vertical rectangular superpixels. Here we see again the 64 by 64 resolution image loaded onto the switch capacitor array. And now the same image after binning with 4 by 4 superpixels. Once we are finished with this operation, we can then read out the desired potentials on the capacitor array. A direct addressing scheme is used to select individual capacitors by row and column for the readout, allowing you to acquire only the capacitor values you are interested in. Thus, after binning by a factor of 4, we can read off the original image directly as a 16x16 16 16 array. This architecture has several advantages. First, you need to digitize fewer pixels, which speeds up image acquisition and reduces memory requirements. There is no need to read out a raw image at high resolution and downsample in software. Second, you can bin down the image according to any pattern selectable by the H and V switching signals. You could, for example, downsample a 256 by 256 raw image down to a 64 by 64 resolution. Or, use rectangular superpixels to downsample by different amounts in each direction. Here, a 256 by 256 image is shown downsampled to a 32 by 256 image. Another option is to apply sequences of switching patterns to implement Gaussian type smoothing functions. For example, you can apply the patterns 0101, 0101, and 1010-1010 over and over to both the H and V switching signals. As you apply this sequence more times, the image stored on the switch capacitor array will be inc increasingly blurred. Along the way, you can read out the image stored on the switch capacitor array and downsample accordingly. Using this technique, it is possible to construct multi-resolution image pyramids from the original raw image. The Firefly series of chips is available in two resolutions. 128 by 256 and 480 by 256. 
The Firefly series uses logarithmic pixels and supports some of the same binning and downsampling functions as the Faria series. However, a difference is that the horizontal and vertical switches and corresponding H and V switching signals are located within the pixel array itself. Note that since there is no switch capacitor array, Gaussian blurring cannot be implemented on a Firefly chip. The operation of a Firefly chip is easy. First, you need to set the H and V switching signals. Second, the chip is exposed to the environment. Third, you then directly address and read out the pixel array at the desired resolution. The Firefly and Faria series are similar, but have subtle differences that should be considered. Both series of chips use predominantly logarithmic pixels. Both series also allow simple binning. However, the Faria series is more flexible since it can implement Gaussian blurring. The Faria series is also slightly more sensitive in low-light environments. On the other hand, the Firefly series of chips are simpler in architecture and easier to operate, and allow a faster frame rate because there is no need to preload a switch capacitor array before binning and readout. We will now discuss the TamilPay series of chips. These chips are simple in design and very easy to use. These chips are image sensor chips rather than full vision chips because they do not contain processing beyond the pixel circuits. All of these chips use logarithmic pixel circuits. The TAM2 chip has a resolution of 16 by 16, while the TAM4 chip has a resolution of 4 by 32. The pixels of the TAM4 chip are rectangular shaped, making them useful for detecting motion along one degree of freedom. The TamilPase 1 and TamilPase 2 chips have respective resolutions of 16 by 16 and 8 by 8. The focal plane is tiny, about 0.4 by 0.4 millimeters, and thus these chips are for advanced users only. The TAM2 and TAM4 chips are the easiest chips to use. They can be operated with just three signals, clock, reset, and analog out. When the reset signal is pulsed, a counter on the chip res resets to select the pixel in the first row and column of the pixel array. This pixel signal may be read out at the analog outline. Pulsing the clock signal advances the counter and reads out the remaining pixels one row at a time. That's it. The TamilPase 1 and TamilPase 2 chips are similar, but have additional circuitry allowing them to be used in extreme low mass applications. On chip, these chips include a voltage regulator, two programmable bias circuits, and a configurable amplifier to amplify pixel signals before output. We have also developed an experimental image sensor using a hexagonal pixel array. This chip is intended for advanced users. Additional hexagonal array chips are currently under development and will be available in the future. All of our chips include an interface that allows them to be operated by almost any processor, whether a simple microcontroller or an advanced DSP or FPGA. An array of these chips may be operated by just one processor, this allows another layer of parallelization above what is native to the chip itself. Using the three chip select lines on each chip, you can send a command line to all chips, a subset of the chips, or even a single chip. Then you can read out the result of these operations from the chips one at a time. We are now at the end of the presentation. Please note that this presentation covered only Sentai chips and not optics, complete sensors, or embedded applications developed by Sentai. The full capabilities of a sensor depend on not just the vision chip, but also the optics, the processor operating the vision chip and acquiring data from it, and the particular algorithm implemented. We invite you to join our user community Embedded Eye. This is an open community and is not limited to technology or hardware developed by or produced at Sentai. Thank you very much for your attention. We hope to see you soon.